Hey guys, Andre here. A uh, quick video on Solar Man. So this is used for the DIA hybrid converter or inverter, um, and I'll probably a whole bunch of other inverters. Um, it's a tool that you can access via your mobile phone. It's a tool you can access via the web. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what it does, how it works, uh, why it's cool. All right. So this is uh, my login. Now, basically, you can go to home.solarmanpv.com and you can register your account. Once you register an account, you need to add your uh, logger. So the logger is a small device that you can plug into your DIA uh, hybrid inverter or normal inverter, and it has a serial number. So once you type the serial number, you press add, it will start talking to each other, and then you're good to go. It can actually start pulling data from your inverter. Uh, as I said before, you can access this data via your mobile phone, and you can access it via the web. So I like to look at it uh, from the web. And once your inverter is set up, it takes a couple of minutes for it to get all the data, but once it's set up, you'll see something like this. So let's explain the dashboard a little bit. First of all, we have our production and how we use the, the, the power and anticipated revenue, uh, how long we are running it, and even the CO2 uh, uh, savings. So the first thing you see is your 24 hour curve. So I'll go back to, oh, let's, let's have a look at this one. So basically you can see the blue line is solar generation, PV generation. So you can see at around nine o'clock, it started generating a good amount of, of energy uh, equally to the amount of, um, of consumption. Now, anything in excess, that's what you want, right? The excess stuff, if you are selling back to the grid, the excess will be a lot more because it, it allows panels to generate the maximum energy because you're able to sell it back. If you don't sell back to the grid or you don't have a battery, then the blue line will not exist because it doesn't have any place to store that excess energy that it's generating. Now, in my case, we have a battery. And looking at, it's now 12 o'clock, uh, 12.20, um, we can see that it's generating 1.5 kilowatt above the current consumption. And that's because I have a battery. And my battery is set to discharge during the day for about 40% uh, of, uh, of the mix. Meaning that I'll let the battery drain until there's 40% left in the battery. And then it just charges it up while we're also consuming. So in this case, during the day, uh, in a couple of hours, the battery will be fully charged and we'll take from the battery as well if we need to. At the moment, we don't need to because our consumption is a lot less. Uh, so the battery can produce and can charge up. Now, production power also has a limit. Uh, in this case, our solar array can generate up to 4.5 kilowatt, but uh, the battery also has a limit in terms of how much kilowatt it can take in and how much it can actually charge on. So it's important to notice if you don't um, sell back to the grid and you don't have a battery, it's going to be equal. If you have a battery, then it will only be able to charge as, mu uh, as much as the battery can take charge in. So some batteries can, can charge much faster or can take in a lot more load. And then, of course, the production power would actually shoot up to 4 kilowatt or even higher. Um, if I start using more, if I start consuming more power, uh, then you'll also notice that you can reach those 4 kilowatt uh, spikes uh, because the battery is still at its max charge, but also the solar power is feeding in enough for your consumption. Now, going back, you can actually uh, go through your historical data and you can see some nice trends of when the sun comes up and when the sun comes down. So in the Philippines, it's very consistent. Normally around 6 in the morning, it, it starts generating and 6 in the evening, it, it drops down. All right, so it's very consistent. Uh, you know, go through, you see the spikes always like that. All right. So let's have a look at this one here, which is an interesting spike. This was a day that probably nobody was in the house or very little people were in the house. And you can see we have a lot of excess generation. Now, this generation is used to charge up the battery. Um, the reason that I set it up like this is really to, to do further cost savings. Because we are not feeding back to the grid, I want to use the battery and I want to use that excess uh, all the time so that we can reduce our bill uh, even further. So if we look at the flow chart, you can see a more of a live real-time stream and we can see we're producing about 3.04 kilowatt and we're using 2.04 kilowatt. So 
the remaining one kilowatt is actually going into the battery, uh, charging it up. Um, and as I said before, if the battery is capable to take more, then the production would be higher as well. Then there's a little, a little weather out, uh, weather setup as well. Not very accurate because it's very sunny at the moment here. There's no drizzle. Uh, and of course you can see the historical data. So you can see from our setup, we, uh, we have about one third of our energy is now being uh, used by the solar and everything else still used by the grid. But of course it, it will cut our bill by one third, which is a, a huge saving, especially in the Philippines, especially now with the energy prices going higher and higher. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can go to your device and in your device, you can see your inverter, the, the inverter IDs, and I'm gonna hide them in, in the edit. Um, and then if I press check, I can see more information. So I can see the, the, the serial numbers. Um, I can see what type it is. And of course I can see the, the panel ar arrays and how they are generating. So this is array one, array two, and this uh, hybrid inverter, I think it only has uh, two um, array connectors, but you have ones that have up to four array connectors. An array is, array is just a set of, of solar panels. Uh, so we have 10 at the moment, I think. And each of them have 450 watts. So theoretically, we should get 4.5 kilowatt. Um, then we also see our battery. And you can see the battery state of charge is 93%. So it's almost full. And uh, that's great stuff. As soon as it's full, uh, it will stop charging the battery. You'll see the, um, this one dropping down as well because we don't need it unless we start using the um, utilities more often here, here in the house. Uh, temperature also important to keep an eye on. It's not completely accurate and you can see it's quite high. Um, at these temperatures, you will have some issues. You can have some issues in terms of throttling. Um, so I'm thinking of putting a small fan in there to, to just uh, lower the temperature a little bit. Uh, at the moment, I haven't had any issues. We were up and running for about 60 days. So yeah, it's all okay. Um, if you have any questions and you want to see the setup, in a bit more detail. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit what we have. So we have a uh, 200 amp hour uh, battery. So that's around 10 kilowatt. It's a blue carbon uh, model. They're very cheap um, comparing to the, the the power walls, but they also are very heavy. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a pain to, to carry them up where we have it. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in that, I can give a more detailed look in our in my solar system. Uh, set up here in the Philippines and otherwise uh, thank you for watching and um, if you like these videos I'm making more in the future anyway so all right thank you